Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be learning about the fourth ventricle of the brain. To begin with, this is a left lateral view of the cerebrum showing the ventricles of the brain. The ventricles are a set of communicating cavities within the brain. These structures are responsible for the production, transport and removal of cerebrospinal fluid which bathes the central nervous system. In this video, we are going to learn about the fourth ventricle that you see right here. The cavity of the hindbrain is called the fourth ventricle. It is a tent shaped space situated between the pons and the upper part of the medulla oblongata in front and cerebellum behind. So the fourth ventricle lies dorsal that is behind the pons and the upper part of the medulla and ventral or in front of the cerebellum right here. So here is an anterior view of the cerebrum showing the ventricles and this is the fourth ventricle. It has lateral boundaries, a floor, roof and a cavity. Now let's learn about it in detail through this diagram. First let's look at the lateral boundaries of the fourth ventricle. On each side the fourth ventricle is bounded infrolaterally that is inferiorly and laterally right here by the gracile tubercle, the cuneate tubercle and the inferior cerebellar peduncle. It is bounded supralaterally by the superior cerebellar peduncles. Now before we learn about the other features of the fourth ventricle, let us concise the important points that we learned till now. The cavity of the hindbrain is called the fourth ventricle. It is a tent shaped space situated between the pons and upper part of the medulla in front and cerebellum behind. So it lies dorsal to the pons and upper part of the medulla and ventral to the cerebellum. It has lateral boundaries, a floor, roof and cavity. Lateral boundaries. On each side, the fourth ventricle is bounded infrolaterally by the gracile cuneate tubercle and inferior cerebellar peduncle and supralaterally by the superior cerebellar peduncles. Next, let us learn about the floor of the fourth ventricle. It is also called the rhomboid fossa because of its rhomboidal shape. Now, in this diagram, here is the floor of the fourth ventricle. It is formed by the posterior or the dorsal surface of the pons and the upper part of the dorsal surface of the medulla oblongata. Now let us look at the structural layer of the floor of the fourth ventricle. The floor is lined by three structures. First is ependyma, a thin layer of neuroglia beneath the ependyma and a layer of grey matter forming various nuclei. Now let us look at the parts of the floor of the fourth ventricle. It is divisible into an upper triangular part formed by the dorsal surface of the pons as I had shown you in the earlier diagram, a lower triangular part which is formed by the dorsal surface of the medulla and an intermediate part which is at the junction of the pons and the medulla. Now this intermediate part is prolonged laterally over the inferior cerebellar peduncle as you can see right here. Now let us look at the features of the floor of the fourth ventricle. First there is the dorsal median sulcus that you see right here. It divides the floor into two symmetrical halves. Next is the sulcus limitans that you see right here. It divides each half into a median eminence and a lateral vestibular area. Here as well the median eminence and the lateral vestibular area. The sulcus limitans presents a depression at the cranial end called the superior fovea right here and right here and towards the caudal part which is called the inferior fovea right here and here. The medial eminence is wider above and narrow below. It presents a facial folliculus just opposite to and medial to the superior fovea right here. In the uppermost part that is the pontine part the sulcus limitans overlies an area called the locus ceruleus that you see right here. This locus ceruleus is bluish in color due to the presence of pigment and neurons. These neurons belong to the reticular formation and they are rich in noradrenaline and help in paradoxical sleep. Now a sulcus descends from the inferior fovea and runs obliquely towards the midline right here. This sulcus divides the median eminence 
into two triangles the hypoglossal triangle medially and the vagal triangle laterally between the vagal triangle above and the gracile tubercle below there lies a small area which is called the area postrema which may function as the chemoreceptor now let's look at the vestibular area this lies lateral to the inferior fovea right here this area is partly in the pons and partly in the medulla so this is also the vestibular area and this is also the vestibular area now the lowest part of the floor resembles the pointed nib of a writing pen and it is described as calamus scriptorius now concising the important points that we learned under the floor it is also called the rhomboid fossa because of its rhomboidal shape the floor is formed by posterior surface of lower or closed part of the pons and posterior surface of the open or upper part of the medulla oblongata looking at the structural layers the floor is lined by ependyma a thin layer of neuroglia beneath the ependyma and a layer of gray matter forming various nuclei looking at the parts it is divisible into upper triangular part formed by dorsal surface of pons lower triangular part formed by the dorsal surface of medulla and an intermediate part which is at the junction of the pons and the medulla this part is prolonged laterally over the inferior cerebellar peduncle moving on to the features the dorsal median sulcus divides the floor into two symmetrical halves the sulcus limitans divides each half into median eminence and lateral vestibular area the sulcus limitans presents a depression at the cranial end called the superior fovea and towards the caudal part called the inferior fovea the medial eminence is wider above and narrow below it presents a facial colliculus just opposite and medial to the superior fovea in the uppermost part that is a pontine part the sulcus limitans overlies an area called the locus cerealis the bluish color is due to the presence of pigmented neurons these neurons belong to the reticular formation they are rich in noradrenaline and help in paradoxical sleep a sulcus descends from the inferior fovea and runs obliquely towards the midline This sulcus divides the medial eminence into two triangles that is the hypoglossal triangle medially and the vagal triangle laterally. Between the vagal triangle above and the gracile tubercle below there is a small area called the area postrema which may function as the chemoreceptor. The vestibular area this lies lateral to the inferior fovea. This area is partly in the pons and partly in the medulla. Finally the lowest part of the floor resembles the pointed nib of the writing pen so it is described as the calamus scriptorius now let's learn about the roof of the fourth ventricle the roof of the ventricle is diamond shaped and can be divided into superior and inferior parts the superior or the cranial part of the roof is formed by the superior cerebellar peduncle and the superior medullary velum the caudal inferior part consists of an exceedingly thin sheet entirely devoid of nervous tissue and caudally the continuity of the sheet is broken by a gap termed the median aperture that you see right here through which the cavity of the ventricle communicates freely with the subarachnoid space now let's look at the tela choroidea of the fourth ventricle it is a double layer of pia mater which occupies the area between the cerebellum and the lower part of the fourth ventricle now in this diagram the tela choroidea with the vascular fringes covered by secretory ependyma forms the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle as you can see this is the t shaped choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle now each plexus consists of a vertical limb lying next to the midline and a horizontal limb extending into the lateral recess the vertical limb of the two plexus lies side by side so that the whole structure is t shaped the vertical limb of the t shaped structure reach the median aperture and project into the subarachnoid space through it the lateral ends of the horizontal limbs reach the lateral apertures The arterial supply of these plexuses is from the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries. Now concising the important points under the roof of the fourth ventricle, the roof of the ventricle is diamond shaped and can be divided into superior and inferior parts. Superior or cranial part of the roof is formed by superior cerebellar peduncle and superior medullary velum. The caudal inferior part consists of an exceedingly thin sheet entirely devoid of nervous tissue. Caudally the continuity of the sheet is broken by a gap termed the median aperture through which the cavity of the ventricle communicates freely with the subarachnoid space 
looking at the telochoroidea of the fourth ventricle. It is a double layer of pia matter which occupies the area between the cerebellum and the lower part of the ventricle. The telochoroidea with vascular fringes covered by the secondary secretory ependyma form the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle. Each plexus consists of a vertical limb lying next to the midline and a horizontal limb extending into the lateral recess. The vertical limb extends to the median aperture while the horizontal limb to the lateral aperture. The blood supply to the plexus is by the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries. Now this is the sagittal section of the brainstem and the cerebellum to show the fourth ventricle. Now we are going to learn about the openings in the roof of the fourth ventricle. In the caudal part of the roof of the fourth ventricle, there are three openings, one median and two lateral openings. The median aperture of the fourth ventricle is called the foramen of Magendi, that is the median aperture. It is a large opening situated caudal to the nodule. This opening provides the principal communication between the ventricular system and the subarachnoid space. Now the two lateral apertures are also known as the foramen of Lushka. It is situated at the ends of the lateral recesses. Now let's look at the angles. We have the superior angle, the inferior angle and the lateral angle. The superior angle is continuous with the cerebral aqueduct. The inferior angle is continuous with the central canal of the spinal cord as you can see right here. And the lateral angle, one on each side is continuous with the inferior cerebellar peduncles. Finally, let's look at the recesses of the fourth ventricle. Now recesses are the extensions of the main cavity of the ventricle. In the fourth ventricle, there are five recesses. We have two lateral recesses that you see right here, the lateral recesses. One recess in the median plane that is called the median dorsal recess and two lateral dorsal recesses that extend dorsally lateral to the nodule. Here is the median dorsal recess in this diagram. Concising the important points under the openings in the roof, in the caudal part of the roof of the fourth ventricle, there are three openings, one median and two lateral. The median aperture of the fourth ventricle is called the foramen of Magendi. It is a large opening situated caudal to the nodule. This opening provides a principal communication between the ventricular system and the subarachnoid space. The lateral apertures, also known as the foramen of Lushka, is situated at the ends of the lateral recesses. Moving on to the angles, we have superior angle, inferior angle and lateral angle. The superior angle is continuous with the cerebral aqueduct, inferior angle is continuous below with the central canal of the spinal cord and lateral angle, one on each side is continuous with the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Moving on to the recesses, we have five, two lateral recesses, one on each side, one recess in the median plane, that is a median dorsal recess and two lateral dorsal recess extend dorsally lateral to the nodule. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. To get the notes of fourth ventricle as well as notes on other subjects of anatomy, physiology, biomechanics, psychology, pathology and pharmacology, visit my Instagram page, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.